I make one joke about the photo. I don't know if it's on TV or not yet. Sometimes they put my joke on TV, original <laughs> joke. That's it for me. I say uh, the joke like uh, one of the photographer take my photo sometimes. And I say, what? They don't look like me. You used to make beautiful photo of me. How come it looks so old now? <laughs> and then I say, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, the camera is old. <laughs> Outdated. <laughs> the camera is, must be about 30 years old already. <laughs> when, when he took my first photo, I was already 30 or something, you know? So it's 30 years here, you know. I try to forget, you know. I blame the camera. <laughs> but the camera nowadays is even better than that time, yeah. So when you see some old, old video before, when your master just came out into the public, someone so blurry, so they just put only audio. Yeah, because the video quality is really, really below lousy. It's okay, you still can hear my voice. And sooner, maybe, if, if uh, this uh, <laughs> object of photography is too old, you will probably just hear the voice also. <laughs> and that photo is my own joke. It's joking about myself, okay? <laughs> but I just exaggerate a little bit. It's a joke. You have, must make it more dramatic, and punchline must be more exaggerated, more shocking, yeah? For people laugh. You will see that joke. Uh, they probably will air it soon. So our life is shorter than we even think. When I was uh, younger, no, a child, uh, my mother told me she was 40 already. And I thought, wow, that's very old. Very, very old. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and when I was 40, I think, oh, it's still okay, you know? And it's quickly you become 60. And quickly you pass the 60 even. And then you don't know how long I will stay here <laughs> next time you come. Really treasure your time and your opportunity, your wealth, your house, your happiness. Not because you need, not because we greedy for these things, but your house, your wealth afford you to see, to have a good, safe place to meditate. Mm -hmm afford you to come here to see me sometimes, you know, to ease your longing and maybe to take home something that you need. Maybe my words, maybe my love, maybe something that we cannot prove. I take home something. So if you don't have wealth, then it's not good, is it? Right? Yeah. So it's not to look down upon money or wealth or position or your comfort in life treasure it, appreciate it. Without them, we won't die, of course. It's just less convenient, less comfortable, that's all, okay? So if you can afford it, you have wealth, you have health, you have good home, happiness at home, then you are very lucky people. But just use it. Use it for your own advantage. Not cling to it, because it will be your master then you will be in trouble. You will not be free. Yeah? To, to free yourself. Mm -hmm. Only that. But everything is good for you. Everything in this world is good. If we know how to use it, like a car, eh? you must know how to control it, otherwise it will be harmful to you and other people. And like electricity, you must know how to channel it, to install it, otherwise it will shock you and might kill you or others. Everything in life is good for you. Not saying, okay, we practitioner, we don't need anything. It's for sure. But don't need anything inside. Inside you put down, okay? You don't care. Inside only, but outside you still need, okay? Uh, don't think, Master, live in a cave. I also go live in a cave. That don't make you become Buddha, okay? It just makes trouble for you. <laughs> You're not used to it. The cave leaking, you don't know how to do it, and you, you might not be healthy. I live there because, of, I don't know, I just like it there, okay? Not because I copy you or because that makes me become a Buddha. Not like that, okay? Huh? Just the situation here, or the situation there. Like before in Sihu, 
we cannot build anything. So we just uh, make cave, okay? Because cave is legal, it's okay. The cave only two meters by two meters. And there's a little porch outside, another meter, or half a meter, it depends on the landscape. Because the situation like that, not because I make a cave so that I become a Buddha, or I become like, oh, ascetic practitioner. It's not. You just live according to your means, according to your situation. Then you have peace, okay? Don't try to force things. Don't try to be too much extraordinary, and then you have no willpower anymore to deal with so many challenges in life. Just let it all be. I live in a cave here because it's more far away, more isolated for me. And so I don't need to ask the disciple to build a house for me. They have already selected a good place, a good feng shui. I don't care about that. The building has to need permission many months until they approve. And build it and then, uh, then have, to have to have inspection and maybe come again and again <laughs> check it. <laughs> yeah? Cost time, precious time for you. Your time is also precious as much as mine. If you don't think so, but I do think so. So I bother you as little as possible so that you have more time to meditate. You already have family, have work, and have other, you know, helping with the center and SMTV. If you spend all your time building home for me, and my dog as well, <laughs> it's, it's still waste too much time. So it already exists, I use it. It's such a, a natural thing, and it's far away from, from the assembly, so I can have a little bit of privacy and quietude to do my stuff. I'm very happy to have it. Truly, I'm not like punishing myself or, or doing it for ascetic reason. Even if I do it to save merit, even then I'm very happy in it. When I go in there and I work a lot already and come back and leave, I can have time to crawl into my tent and be alone, zip it down. And, oh, I feel, wow, such a blessing. <laughs> such a blessing. I really appreciate it very much. So do not do what I do if you cannot. Don't do that, okay? Don't abandon your family or girlfriend, boyfriend or husband, wife for me because I did that. Not necessary, okay? You put that inside your heart. Not everybody has affinity to be monk and nun, okay? And not everybody can be a monk as a monk. Look at me, look at me, do I look like a monk? Huh? <laughs> Even I became a monk. Look at me, huh? Huh? Look at this. Huh? I don't look like a monk at all. But who cares? <laughs> do you care? No. You care how I wear? No. No, okay. It's your karma, okay? Look at your karma. You understand this? Don't look. <laughs> they are not clothes. They are dirt, green dirt. <laughs> karma, your karma. Hmm. It's okay. Or maybe my karma. Okay. Maybe I, I have to do it, so I can earn more money to help some people who only needs money <laughs> and don't need spiritual help yet. Need money, then I can help them. Okay. Yeah, we have different kind of help. Hmm. All right then. I thank you for being enlightened enough to look through the dirt to see my soul and to see my sincerity and my spiritual attainment. I thank you for that. I'm really proud of you. I, I thank you. I'm very touched. I'm really touched. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very rare. It's rare, yeah, because I came out as a nun, and then I changed 10,000 times for <laughs> different things, and you still are with me. So that's not about me, okay? It's about you, that you have really progressed. You have really improved. Your soul improved. Your spiritual elevation has really <laughs> gone high. And I'm very proud of you, and I'm very glad to have you as my so-called disciples. Thank you so much. Make, you make me proud. Thank you. Especially the, 
the monks and the nuns who follow me. I mean, the real monks you nuns, long time, you know, long time practicing before they come to me. I really thank them. I really admire them. <laughs> because monks and nuns, they mostly, normally fix in their own belief. I don't look like anything <laughs> worthy of their belief and their trust. And they still trust and they still believe me and they keep coming for retreat and seeing me. That means they are high. Not just because they are monks or nuns, but because they are high, highly developed. That's why I tell you, leave them alone, protect them, respect them, okay? So that they can be more uh, developed in their own way, yeah? Do not try to be too near, because you don't know what your level, you might contaminate them. <laughs> I'm sorry if I offended you. I tell the truth all the ways, all the time. I don't want to be famous in the world as a sweet talk lady, as a gentle master, as a very polite master. No, I'm here for the truth. I'm here only for you, for your good. And if I have offended you ever in any way, forgive me, but I won't change. Don't look for change. <laughs> I won't change. If I have to kick you out sometimes, so that your ego will run away, then I will do that. If I have to yell at you so that you wake up, I'll do that. Don't expect any change from your master. She is like that, she will always be, okay? Right, take care of yourself, look inside, don't look outside. Be humble always, be acceptance, so that you can progress. Don't listen to your mind, your ego. I don't ever want to do anything harm to you. Least of all to the good practitioner. Least of all wanting to offend you. For what reason? It's only not good for me. But I ask your forgiveness. In case you get angry with me, please don't. Okay? Don't be. To practice our way is very difficult. It looks easy, though. If you listen to my advice, my experience is easy. If you listen to your ego, to the world, your habit, then it's difficult. First of all, how many people can eat vegetarian even? So simple. Hmm? Many drop out because cannot be vegetarian, because cannot be strong enough to stand for your belief. Uh, the wife of the children even of the friend even talk you out of vegetarianism, and you listen to all of them. I'm a one only. I cannot go against all of them. They're near you every day. So you have to be careful now. Hmm? You have to stand up for yourself. Because after all, you're born alone, you will die alone. If you don't stand up for yourself, nobody else really do. Wife can divorce you anytime. Husband can leave you for another girl anytime. Boyfriend, girlfriend, same stuff. But you have to stay with yourself, with your own conscience, with your heart all the time. It's difficult, I know that. I know it's easy for me to advise you standing here. I know outside is difficult. But you tell your friend or ex-disciple, have to be strong, hmm? because you don't know if you have next life as a human. You don't know if next life you see Master again, any Master, not just me. For example, yeah, you must take it now, this time, this life only. Learn to cook from SMTV, internet, be independent. Cook for your wife instead of let her cook for you. Cook for your husband instead of being spoiled by him or go out eating. Huh? Cook, show them how beautiful, tasty vegetarian is and how easy it is. Cook simple first, like I teach you on TV. Simple, yes, very simple. And then even invite them out sometime, vegan restaurant, see how many people eat vegan, you see, and they're so healthy, happy. All the photos on the wall of the hero, athlete, vegan, huh? muscle man, huh? not just a normal like me, small and skinny, huh? but muscle. Hmm? 
<laughs> yeah, handsome, good looking, strong, 60 something, still champion of the world. For example, yeah, and doctors, tons of them are vegans. Beautiful movie stars, men and women, handsome, successful, famous, and compassionate. Go tell them. Take them out to a vegan restaurant. Hmm? Don't say anything. Surprise today. Even if they don't, oh, just one time. Please. <laughs> today is my birthday, darling. Yeah, do something. <laughs> it's my birthday. <laughs> just one time. Okay? Do something. Use your, <laughs> use your wisdom. If you have any. I'm sure you do have, right? If not, you can learn from movies. How? Yeah? Use something. Use your intelligence. Mm -hmm. To help one person return to original soul, self, is a merit, immeasurable. Okay? Your job is not only to follow me, to come retreat, meditate, but your job is to help your fellow human beings who's erring. They're going to hell. You stand by and look. Huh? All the religions say, if you eat meat, you drink wine, you go to hell. I never said that before. For me, it's too strong a condemnation, but it is the truth. All the religious masters said that. Guru Nanak said that. Buddha said that. Okay? Maybe Jesus said that too. They cut it. They edited out of it. Just some little thing left, so that we know Jesus also teach vegetarian. If they're going to hell and you profess that they're your best friend and your wife, your beloved boyfriend, girlfriend, you let them go to hell? No. And you even follow them? No. Is that a way of a gentleman or a good lady? No. No. Do something. If I can, you can. Okay? Do it gentle way. Do it a smart way, not forcing. Okay? Do something. If today you fail this way, you try another way. You're a smart boy, intelligent girl. You know how, okay? You cannot just watch your beloved one or your good friend, such a good being, being misled and then go to hell. Not just being a bad boy, bad girl in this lifetime, or harm the planet, harm themselves, their health only, but go to hell. Would you want that? And what will we do? Do something, right? Yes. I don't want a lot of disciples. It just make me more trouble, of course, okay? But I want them to be healthy, sane, and at least go back to be human, not go to hell. If they don't go to heaven, at least they don't go to hell. Okay, understand that? You try to save them like that. And that's all I want from you. Nothing, not your wealth, not your money, not your uh, worship, your reverence, not uh, your praise, no, I love you all day, Master. No, I want you to help your friends, your relatives, okay? And they all are our friends, they are all are our relatives, besides helping the animals not to suffer so gruesomely in some dark corner that we have no access, that we don't even see, that we don't even know. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. All the things you learn about compassion, mercy, loving kindness, use it. Anyway, if you know somebody is going to fall or hurt, and you know it in advance, then you would think of the way to help that person or not? Yes. Yeah? Think, you must think. Because situation is different. Your friend, your family, people, personality, it's different. I cannot teach you one by one, <laughs> okay? You have to think. You live with them. You see them all the time. You know their personality. You know the way to help. Okay, huh? I count on you. Mm -hmm. Help them, please. Help them and help the animals. If you say you thank you and you don't know how to repay my kindness, do that. Then I will be very happy. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay?
tomorrow we talk again, huh? Uh, tomorrow is the official, right? Yeah, I will try to read the Surangama Sutra. Thank you, Jing. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Good appetite. Open line. Can you see who me? Eat food. But I now I busy because I work outside. So today I can't eat food. I normally eat food when I go outside. Okay. Today I also eat food. 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 I say normally I would invite the monks to eat with me. Yeah. Uh, not normally, but if I see them, I, if I have a chance, but I cannot now. I have to eat and look at the paperwork at the same time. Okay? That's how I have to manage. Okay? I have dogs even. <laughs> and they also love me, just like you do, maybe more. And they also need affection. But when you are here or Sunday or retreat, I cannot even take care of them. No, I just have to tell them, sacrifice, okay? <laughs> All right then, I wish you good appetite. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> See you later, maybe, okay? If I finish my work, I may come back, okay? Yes. Maybe, I say maybe. <laughs> I love you all. I wish I could hug each of you and tell you I love you, but we just take love from the heart, okay, huh? I really do appreciate you and your presence. Ciao. Love you. God bless. <laughs>